26. Evaluate the integral of 4 natural log of x cubed over x dx. All right, I would strongly suggest on this problem before you get started on it to move the 3, since it's an exponent, out front with the 4. So this will really be 12 natural log x over x dx. The other thing that I would suggest doing is taking this 12 and moving it out front. So we have 12 natural log ln x over x dx. Alrighty, um, next we're going to do a u substitution, and since um, we don't have a derivative of ln, well actually we don't have an integral of ln, that's what we're going to let our u be. So u will equal ln x, and then du, the derivative of ln x would be 1 over x dx, which notice we really have that, we have 1 over x dx, so we're all set for a u substitution, so I'm going to have 12. On the inside I end up with u du. And then the integral of u is 1 half u squared. And then there's a 12 there. So my final answer here will be 6 u squared. And since u is ln x, it will be 6 quantity ln x squared plus c. Now I'm going to try to show you if you would have worked it a different way, um, what that would have happened. Let's say you bumped the 4 out front, but that's all you saw. So let's say you let u equal the natural log of x cubed. If you would have done that, then we would have let du would actually the integral, of the excuse me, the derivative of natural log is du over u. So it would have been 3x squared over x cubed. And notice that that would reduce to 3 over x. And so notice on this one, um, I would have been missing the 3 and I would have put a 1 third on the outside. So just kind of hang with me. It's going to look different than that answer, but that's okay. So I'm going to have 4 thirds, the integral of u du once again. And then here I would have had 4 thirds times 1 half u squared. And then that would end up being 2 thirds u squared. And that would have end up being 2 thirds ln x cubed squared. And actually, if you do work that out, it does end up being um, the exact same thing. So um, I just kind of want to show you here, if just to show you why it's going to be the same thing. So either one of those is accept acceptable answers. On this specific problem, if you would have brought the 3 out front, 3 squared is 9, 9 times 2 is 18 thirds, which is 6. So they're really both the same answer. Okay, problem 7. Use the derivative to determine whether the function has an inverse. Right, we know if a function has an inverse, it would be strictly monotonic, which means f prime would only be one sign. So we definitely want to find f prime on this problem. It's going to be 9x squared minus 4x, and then I'm going to set that equal to 0. Um, factoring out in x, I'll have 9x minus 4. So my critical numbers will be 0 and 4 ninths. And then if I make an f prime chart, I'll put 0 and 4 ninths. If I plug negative 1 into the derivative, I'll get a positive answer. If I plug, let's say, like 1 half, nope, I can't plug 1 half in. Um, if I plug in like 1 third or something like that into the derivative, I am going to get a negative answer. And then if I plug in something bigger than 4 ninths, I'm going to get a positive answer. So um, since f prime is not, since f prime does change signs, this will not have an inverse. So I'm just going to say no inverse. I'm going to say the function is not strictly monotonic because f prime changes sign. The biggest thing on this one, it's not f prime that's strictly monotonic, it's the actual function is not strictly monotonic. Okay, question eight. Let f of x equal x cubed minus six. Find the derivative of the inverse at 20, 21. So we're, I'm going to use the formula 1 over f prime, f inverse of 21. Okay, if you recall from these to get the inverse of 21, we're actually going to let the y value be 21. So we're going to have 21 equals x cubed minus 6. I'll then get x cubed equals 27, which means x will equal 3. So we just found that the inverse at 21 is equal to 3. And now I need to find the derivative at 3. So f prime is going to equal 3x squared. And if I find the derivative at 3, if I plug 3 in, I will get 27. So then from here, this whole thing is now 27. So I'll get 1 over 27. That will be my derivative. OK, find the derivative x squared e to the x plus y squared equals e to the 3x. Um, taking the derivative of this, um, we're going to use the product rule f and g. 
f prime will equal 2x, g prime will equal e to the x. So f prime g, we'll get f prime e to the x plus f g prime x squared e to the x plus 2y, don't forget that we have to put dy dx on this one, and then equals 3e to the 3x, because you do have to take the derivative of e to the 3x is e to the 3x um, times the derivative of the 3x. Okay, to solve for dy dx, I am going to get the dy dx on the side by itself and move everything else over. So minus 2x e to the x minus x squared e to the x. And then to get the dy by itself, we'll just divide everything by 2y. So dy dx will equal 3e to the 3x minus 2x e to the x minus x squared e to the x all over 2y. Would you please get those cookies out of the oven? They're done even if they don't look like it. Somebody? I got it. Alright, evaluate the integral of e to the square root of x over the, the square root of x dx. Right, I know in a problem that has 1e that we're going to let u be the exponent, so we'll let u equal the square root of x, which is equivalent to x to the 1 half, and then du, the derivative of that would be 1 half x to the negative 1 half, or 1 over 2 square root of x dx. Notice I have the square root of x, I'm just missing the 2 down there. And since I put a 2 down on the bottom, to get rid of it, we would actually multiply the outside by 2. So now I have 2. I've done nothing with my e, so e is still there. The exponent is my u, du. So the integral of e to the u is just e to the u. And we'll just drop the 2 down. And then replacing my u with my what I had, which was the square root of x. And then plus c.